All right, what's up, Dragon Brew? Today we're taking a look at Naya Tokens. However, there's some things we learned during this season with some really interesting cards, and I wanted to incorporate those into this version and see if it makes it any better. Plus, we get to dig up an old friend that should do some big things. I want to give a shout out to our newest member, Show and Tell. You should go check out their podcast channel on YouTube because yours truly has an interview over there. So if you want to learn more about me and behind the scenes stuff or whatever, you should go check that out. Now, we did have a choice between a couple of cards. We were either going to go Mondrak or we're going to go with this dude, Jetmere, who made the cut for today's list, just because I want to try something different and see if it works. And this is a good way to put us over the top if we are making a lot of tokens. One of the other things we're going to be playing here is going to be Pia Nalar. Like, this is a pretty interesting card because we do have a fair amount of things with Adventure, which means you're playing stuff from out of our hand to make extra tokens. And then they're going to get bonuses from stuff like Jetmere, which is actually really cool. We're also going to be playing, like we said, some adventure things. So we're going to start with Heart Flame Duelist because this gives us a way to have some extra removal in here. And this is a fine 3-1 to play if we just need a body to attack with. Also playing stuff like Invasion of Gobacon counts because once we go to play it, if we've already tackled the uh, battle, then it becomes a spell that actually is being played not from our hand, which also helps us out. And it can possibly save our creatures. We're going to be playing Questing Druid because we have a lot of non-green things we're going to be casting, so that should work very well for this card. Additionally, we are going to be playing Wandering Emperor because, again, we want just a little bit of removal and some stuff we can do here. But another interesting card we want to take a look at today is Imidane's Recruiter, partly because I wanted some cards that were good whenever we needed something post-sweeper. And the way I'm looking at it here is that if your opponent goes ahead and sunfalls, then on your turn with five mana, you can make two tokens, and they're kind of right back off to the races wherever you were kind of at before the sweeper happened. At least that's in theory. If nothing else, we just pay, play the creature side, everything gets plus one, and boom, more damage, right? So that's not bad either. And of course, we're going to be playing Virtue of Loyalty because, well, it makes a token, it's an adventure, and it can pump all of our dudes. So we don't have a reason to shy away from that. And finally, we are going to also be playing some Wedding Announcement because it's really good at pumping creatures and it makes extra tokens, right? It fits the bill. Now, there will be a few other cards, but if you want the full deck list, like always, it'll be at the end of the video, or you can go down to the description below, look for the blue arrows. It'll take you to a link to our Moxfield deck list. You can get it there and see a bunch of other cool stuff we already play in Standard. Let's go play some games, and I'll remind you who we're sponsored by today. If you want to buy any cards for today's deck or any other game stuff, remember to go to CoolStuffInc.com. You can use code DRAGON. That'll save you 5% at checkout. And Cool Stuff Inc. always has cool stuff in stock. Ooh, this is a decision. Uh, uh Yeah, we'll keep. Oh boy, I do not feel good about this one. I almost... Oh, it didn't really matter then, I guess. I can say I almost played this first, but then that would have been even worse. So I was thinking on turn three that I could just still play tap lane, play questing druid, but the way the lands came up it ended up not mattering totally. So it's all good. Oh, that came in. Ugh. Okay. Well, crap. I think I'm playing this. I'm gonna pass. Assuming they'll try to like Jukai Naturalist or uh, what's his name here? Calyx. And then we'll just try to kill the Naturalist, I think. Yeah, I have no reason to try to block here. Try to kill a Naturalist. Hopefully they can't save it. But obviously they have something here. All right. Well, that's that's a thing to know. Glad we drew this. Yep, we'll pay the extra. If they want to save it that badly, it must mean more to them than it does to us. So let's see what we can do. Well, they had another one. All right, that's unfortunate. So now I have to wonder how many royal treatments are they playing, because that's a real question. You got it. That could be good for later. Um. Hmm. I'm not sure what I want to do here. 
feel like I'm just gonna play this, gain a life. They can kill our creature, or exile it, or whatever it is they want to do here. And then hopefully, if we can find a Pia on top, we could do a couple of things. Pia on a land would probably be the best outcome for us here. And they got Nostification. Sure. Alright, question is going to be... Well, let's let them do their thing. We don't have to do this. We can let them attack first. I mean, we already know what they're doing, and they'll try to flip their thing, which is fine. Oh, they have an audacity? Blah. Alright, well... Found a land, but not what we wanted. Dang it! This is not good. We did get a Pia. Well, that matters. Uh, let's see. This is... As long as you control at least three of the enchantments. Oh, it's lifelink and indestructible. Uh, they draw a card for enchantments. Okay, fair. Okay, let's do this. And this. And this. No attacks. Alright. This is still setting up okay. Like, even another untapped land. Would I just play Druid, make two dudes, and then we could Jetmere and Recruiters all in one turn? I mean, it's a lot to ask, but, I mean, it's not impossible. Oh, Audacity and they get to draw? Oh, gross. Alright. I mean, I guess we're just going to have to take a hit, right? Another ossification, bruh. All right, well, is what it is. Nothing we're gonna do about it. All right, hey, when you're chaining off, you're chaining off. If you hit it, you hit it. All right, we just take nine. I don't know how we're gonna get out of this. Actually, I know what I was hoping for. I wanted to draw... Well, it wouldn't matter anyway, because that is indestructible. Right? Yeah. So, what's our plan? One, two, three, four, five. We just don't have enough. I need to make... Okay. Actually, this works. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> So this will make a token, we'll get a life. This can make two tokens, we get two life. Next turn, I would need four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to do everything I want to do. And I currently have two, four, five, six, seven. So I don't think we get to play Druid. I think we just have to do this, make our two tokens. Uh, no attacks, just keep more things at bay. Probably discard the land, put a Jukai Naturalist into play if I were them. Yep. Get a card. Probably something that exiles. Hopefully they're just two lands. Because <laughs> if they're not, I don't know what we're going to do. A royal treatment. That is an enchantment. And Catilda. Oh, gosh. All right, can we win from here, even if we play Jetmere? I don't think we can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be eight. This would be nine. But we have enough for that. That's seven. Everything would have plus three, four, and double strike and trample. We would kill everything off except for these two. They would get to block. That they would gain 14. I don't think we're going to win, but I'm just going to still make the play anyway. Because it's all we've got, right? I don't really have a choice. Oh, I forgot. That has lifelink. Yeah, we for sure can't win now. Alright, well. 
We tried. We made the most out of it. I mean, it's what we got. <laughs> like, we don't get to kill them, but we have a bunch of blockers left over. So that's something. But we're still ultimately dead. Right? Because that's 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35, 40, 55 damage times 2. Yeah, that's not enough with them gaining that much life. It's just not. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. Oh, I think we might. We are. We are. I think I did my math wrong. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What? What? Yeah, I don't think I was calculating that the first run of damage was going to happen from the trample. And then we do everything else. And then they gain the four. And because we first strike the four two, they don't gain that life either. That's sick. That's sick. That's so good. <laughs> I didn't... Wow. Wow. Well, I guess we keep this. Sure. Interesting. The opponent's username is Narfstar. Wasn't Narf the dude... Was that from... Uh... I feel like it was from Thundercats. Was that not the little thing? Narf! Well, maybe I made that up. I don't know. Or maybe I'm old, too. Y'all probably don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. All right, well, we're getting blasted up front. That's not great. Okay. Well, we don't have much else to do here, so I'm going to go ahead and play this. This probably dies, but, you know, we'll have to eat it. Kind of wondering what happens if we don't block, but it looks like they're going to end up killing it here. Maybe? Yeah, not blocking. We'll see what they do on the first attempt. All right. Thought maybe they would have something there, but who knows? All right, we'll go with this. No attacks. Looks like we're going to put uh, Pia on blocking duty next turn and just see what happens, I think. If we'd had if this had been another land, then maybe I would consider not and possibly have a chance of playing some things, but here I feel like our best bet is probably going to be something in the ballpark of, like... Uh, yeah. We'll block. I'm sure this is just going to get a plus three here, but that's fine. Oh, not even that. Okay, we came out okay on that. I thought we were going to take extra damage. That ended up not being nearly as bad. One untapped non-pain land. Ooh, wrong land deck. Wrong land. That, that doesn't help. Um... Let's see, if we play another wedding announcement here, I guess we go ahead and do that. No attacks. I kind of wanted to leave up Heart Flame Duelist and place something like, I don't know, Squee or something got played here, which would kind of suck, but... I mean, sure, why not? If they're going to trample, they're going to trample. But I sort of feel like they would have done it last time if they had it. Yeah, they didn't have it. Okay. This does leave us some options, but I think we're just going to pass here. Everything we want to do, except for this, can be done at instant speed. And we can shoot something down. We can get access to extra cards next turn we can just play this and flip it we can also exile something to draw to gain life oh they're just coming at us that's unfortunate they're thinking they can finish us i suppose all right lord skitter uh that's unfortunate because it comes down as a four four golly all right, that's tough. Can't do much about it. Was really hoping we'd get a little more out of that, but... An 
All right. They have a 4-4. Four, four. How do we feel about that? We can slow down the next thing in their hand, possibly. Oh, we definitely want to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, all right. So... I mean, we could get Lord Skitter dead, I guess. Let's plus one these. Remember your training. If I attack, I don't get the token, though. And I want the token, for sure. So, I'm just going to attack with this. Assuming they're going to block to not give it to us. Maybe they won't. Because, I mean, me tacking into there kind of is suspect. But... They're willing to let me be sus all I want. All right, cool. All right. We're at six. Opponent's hand's effectively empty right now, except for what they just top decked. All right, good deal. Mm, this is an interesting one. Yeah, I'm going to keep this hand, and mostly because almost no matter what happens, like at least veteran, veteran, even if I don't have this open on two, So we'll see how this goes. And I originally had these as cheeky house mouse, I think, at some point. But I wanted a little bit of life gain in these types of scenarios. You know, especially if you're playing against, like, mono red or something. Alright, I'm assuming they've got a bunch of burn spells incoming. You know, I'm willing to attack here. I don't think they're going to trade us. Exactly. And I'm probably not blocking. I'm going to force them to do their thing. But right now, we kind of need to do the first things first. Oh, uh, of course they had that. And I need to be able to draw land. That's that's the first thing before anything else happens. All right. Good start. Good start. Nice talk deck. I mean, they're going to gain a fair amount of life with that out right now. Until I decide to play our Hearth Flame Duelist and kill their things, but... Alright, so they gotta get to... So they're obviously playing a bunch of burn. That's their plan. Get access to a bunch of cards, do their thing. I can appreciate that. I kind of like what they're doing. I like where their head's at. I like the cut of their jib, as some people would say. The way that turn went, too, I kind of look like I don't have lands, which is... Or a play, which is kind of cool. Uh, no blocks. Are they going to do anything? Nope. Alright, let's see if we can try to kill it. I mean, we can try. Let's see if we are successful. Okay, that oddly worked. Wasn't really expecting that. Hey, guess what? I have a card that kills that. Oh no, who's making noises but in the background? Hold please, let me fix that for y'all. Alright, that won't shouldn't be bothering us anymore. Uh I think here we just pass and we just flash in the virtue. Uh actually we can attack. We'll still make a token anyway here. Alright. Now our tokens aren't dying to end the festivities. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can draw an untap land. We got a land, not an untap land, sadly. So uh, it'll just have to do. Attacking. Hit it with a three damage spell, please. Oh, I'll hit it with four. Dang it. I was going to try to save it with the Wandering Emperor. Uh, okay, I guess I'll play one of these. And... I guess this. Like, if they have some type of sweeper, Brotherhood's End or whatever, or... it's no big deal. We'll lose some stuff, but we can rebuild fairly easily with this hand. I mean, if you got a sweeper, now's the time, opponent. Yep, you got it. Yep. 
Okay. We are back in. Try our turn at landing a virtue. And ours worked. Okay. What you got for us? Nothing, they said. Wow. We have six mana? All right, guess we're attacking. We're well, just gonna take it. Well, not gonna lie, didn't see that coming. All right. I don't know what they're up to, so I'm just gonna let things untap here. Seismic Wave, it deals two damage to any target and one, da one damage to each non-artifact creature. So they're gonna gain four? Yeah, sure. Oh, it deals three in total. I misread it. Ah, well, it's not a big deal. <laughs> like, we're still fine. It ultimately doesn't matter. It really doesn't. I mean, we have all of our own answers over here. Yeah, exactly. Didn't matter. Yeah, I just wanted to reread this. It said, uh, deals two damage to any target and one damage. Oh, it's one damage. For some reason in my head, I met, I processed that as being one damage to each other non-artifact creature that opponent controls. So that was silly because I could have saved my dude there. Then it would have untapped as like a 6-6 six, six or, or a... Would have been a 4-4, four, four, would have untapped been a 5-5. Five, five. So that's a little bit silly. But it ultimately, like I said, didn't really matter. We had so many answers in hand, and we were still at 12 life, so we were fine. But always good to slow down and reread cards so we understand how they work. Oh, boy. All right, let's keep it. Hmm, this could be a mistake. We'll see, though. We'll see. I mean, we're going to play Pia, expecting Pia to die. We'll play wedding announcement, and then maybe we'll draw something worthwhile after that. We'll see. But the sand could end up just being too slow to help us, honestly. And right now, we're going to take at least one point to be able to cast Pia. So we have a lot of things we're having to consider right now that are that are not particularly positive for us, to say the least. Okay, well, that's at least a no damage land, so that's something. Hmm, there's a play with fire. If it's not a play with fire, it's a, uh, a rage. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, like, in my head, a plan on how we're going to get out of this. It might involve needing to draw one of our Lunark veterans along the way, I think. This is actually kind of tough. Alright. So it might be a rage, since I didn't want to shoot anything here. I mean, ah, oh, that sucks. They didn't have anything to get, though. Or they just passed since they couldn't play it, so you never know. This actually kills a thing, which is nice, but we'll probably just block for now, if we can. I was like, please don't be thundering, Raiju. <laughs> All right, we'll block there. All right, we're only at eight, which we very much could die here if we're not careful. I think we have to play Questing Druid straight up and then use this to kill the etchings. And I'm not totally sure what we're going to do after that. <laughs> like It's kind of like, you know, play this, play this, profit. I don't know. We're, we're kind of up in the air at the moment. Bone has two cards, too. This is going to be rough. Um, go ahead and do this. Just play the creature. Play another untapped land. Pass the turn. We technically have two blockers for a second. And they could activate the land attack here for some tough blocks. 
We turn the druid into a 2-2. Maybe it blocks. Alright, that's a play with fire that happens. Sadly, can't do anything about it. Might be the beginning of the end. Oh, they had an adversary here. Hmm. It's not what we expected. Alright. Kill this. We could take three, go to five, or we could take four, go to four. I guess we kind of have to. What are the odds? We did not get there. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. If we had a dude to gain life, it would have been nice here. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? I almost feel like we have to try. Even then, we take a point to play one. That's not great either. Hmm. That's kind of the only way we get out of trouble, though, right? Because I don't think making two three threes is enough because we get shot for two and then we just die anyway. Yeah, it's not particularly great for us. I think this is what we got to do. Just hope it's there. Uh, that's something. That's something. Let's not completely discount that. I mean, we're still only at two. So, I mean, if Pony has any other haste thing, we die too, realistically. Alright, they had burn spells. They could just shoot us after attacking. We're dead. <laughs> We go first. You know what? We're going to keep. We can at least play a chunk of our hand to start the game. And if we get any third land, we should be okay. You know, in theory. All right. Kind of have a decision to make here. I think I want to play this and attack into it. Oh boy, so this is a sacrifice deck, obviously. You have multiple Varans, so that doesn't really matter. You have these, they don't matter to you have a thing. You need three lands, let you steal one of our things, and you could sack it, which sucks because you get the treasure. Um my God, do we just let you have Varan? I guess so. And they just make it hard for them to remove stuff? I don't really know. But I think we're now on wedding announcement type plans here. Which makes the most sense. And the good news is these cards are not particularly great against wedding announcement type stuff. That is pretty reasonable though. Neat. Um... No attacks. In the turn. I feel like if we do this right, we can outvalue them, even with them drawing cards and such. I don't think we have to be in a hurry. This is just a matter of if we need to kill Harvester or kill Brand. Probably just kill Harvester. Furnace Reigns. Yeah, sure. Like, I'll just block with one of my tokens. Because I get the benefit of having it back anyway. Not giving them the treasure, because from what we know of their hand, they could also just be land light. So I'm fine just taking that loss there. Uh, hold on. Do we want to just do this and get some value? I don't think so. Not yet. I think we'll just kill this. Also, they're sort of aiding us by giving us a flyer here. No attacks. We'll end the turn. So now we have a flyer that could go get that invasion of Gobakan for us, which would be great. And it looks like they didn't find land. So now, yeah, sure. All right. 
So we get to do that. Sack our dude. Draw the card. Fair enough. You got it, opponent. Can't really be too mad, though. They spent a lot of resources dealing with one card of ours. So, I mean, fair enough. I mean, go for it. You have the Corrupted Conviction? What are we waiting on? I mean, I guess they want to sack one of our things to kill one of our things. All right. Interesting. I would have went for the cards if I were them, but... You know, we each live to make our own choices. Nice, nice. You love to see it. You love to see it. All right, so we're going to go here. We're going to go... Why is this highlighting from my yard? Y'all see that? When I highlight the questing druid, it's highlighting my Lunar veteran. I've never seen it do that before. That's so weird. Uh, we'll play that. We'll play this. Pump some folks. We're going to send this over here. This over here. Uh, I mean, sure. We'll send this into Vran. Why not? I mean, they could play the other one, I suppose. We don't care that much. Uh, yeah, that works for us. Oh, they didn't want to block with it. Hell yeah, make another Thopter. Pump that bad boy. Alright. Feels pretty good, not gonna lie, that feels real good. Yeah, we had it all that time. The crazy part here too is we already had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we could have played Jetmere. Would have been eight. We'd have been one short. I would have needed something from Exile to get there. But if we drew any two mana thing, we'd be able to pump. But even then, Jetmere's going to do everything plus two at the very least there. So yeah, we were just going to play it and go for it. If they kill Jetmere, we don't even care because we'd be tacking with a whole pile of stuff there, which would have been great. So yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Okay, what do we do? We keep this. Let's play this tapped. You know, I'm going to take a chance here and play this first. Maybe there's a Liliana or something there. There is a Liliana. Ah, there's also a Path Apparel. Gosh damn it. Uh, okay. Hate that. But that's way more annoying for us. Yep, you got it. So what are we looking to do? I guess we do this. This. And then hope to find something we can play alongside a Pia next turn. Like our goals here. I mean, they can kill off both of these. Which they're probably gonna do. Because I would. No blocks. All you, friend. Ooh, that changes things slightly. Especially since we already know there's a go for the throat or cut down in their hand. All right, let's attack here. In the turn. Exactly. We kind of wanted them to use that cut down. We kind of had to... F I didn't like it, but we kind of had to force the issue there. Alright. Get rid of one of those. Try to sustain what little bit we can of our life total. Okay. We can play this. They can make us sack it, attack into our Wandering Emperor. We don't want to play Pia yet, I don't think. Alright, let's go ahead and go with this. Uh, 
They don't have anything they could return, so it would be just giving this a bigger life total, right? Let's just play this tapped. I think we just make a 2-2 two -two here, because we know what we're staring at in their hand. It's just not worth it. Alright. And then, in theory, we can Pia play whatever we have off this, get a couple of attacks in, possibly. All right, we knew that was coming. But we've kind of done what we can here. Oh, I forgot I had to use that. Oh, that's stupid. I keep forgetting this is a sorcery, but the other the creature is a, is a instant. Um So we play one of these. We would take five. Yeah, I did that all wrong because I should have been able to play one of these and a Pia and would have got that flipped. Uh, that's that's tough. I don't know if we can win now going to two because if they get a shielded, we just die. Okay, we still got to do it. I just, ah, uh, man, it sucks. I just misplayed and that hurts. Yeah, not much we can do here. Oh, it looks like they probably got shielded. Yeah. Alright. Yep. That's all because I played poorly. Can't blame anybody but myself. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Great. Is this mono blue? I mean, the interesting thing is, if this is mono blue, we do have a couple of instant speed things. We have a little bit of life gain. We can play on their turn. So, I mean, we have options. It's just setting up for a very long, boring match, sadly. And they didn't do anything. All right, so we know their hands pretty much all counters at this point. Which is good information to have. Uh, I'm not even going to attack because I don't know what type of mono blue they're playing just yet. So I didn't want to attack and then they flash in a creature, kill our veteran. Because this is a matchup where it doesn't really seem like it, but a lot of times just the incremental life gain really can't matter. All right. We'll get one counter out of their hand now. Because we know there's at least one that's in the gate. No make disappear. Same difference. That works. All right. That's one of the cards we were looking for. Go ahead and cast this. See if it gets negated. Sounds good. I think we will also play this. Fantastic. Because I have no real interest in playing the Wandering Emperor, but they don't know that. Alright, so we'll take that land. We will... Attack. And I will go ahead and let them, because we're going to lose this either way. We know they have a counter, but we'll just let them play it. Lose access to it, and it's fine. Because now I'm trying to play the game about resourcing them. Can we get enough of these things through that matter? Alright. Uh, let's try again. Oh, we already played a land for the turn. Never mind. Alright, no attacks in the turn. Not that worried about a terror. I just let them have it. Like, I'd rather save this to try to kill the big dude if they have him. 
go ahead and go with this. If you got counters, let's see them. Alright. So they at least are out of negate type counters. That is information that's good to have. So, knowing what we know. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. Try this. Seems like that worked. Does this work? It does. I mean, I guess we attack? Bounce the token, maybe? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, what else you got left in the tank for us? I mean, sooner or later, we're going to see a really big gin. Well, they don't have anything. Oh, ho, ho. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Dang it, not quite enough. You have a counter for that. You have a counter for this. It looks like no. Okay. Well, then uh, we're attacking. Might just be for one, but we're attacking. Uh-oh. What you got? Gonna draw a whole bunch? Draw for each island you have or whatever that thing is? Nope. Not even that. And they're doing nothing. All right. Let's see if this gets by. Probably doesn't, but... Kind of okay if they waste a counter on that and not our virtual loyalty. Interesting. They let that go. Now, why would they let that go? They must ha need to get a uh, counter our virtual loyalty. The only thing I can think of here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. All right. What if we try to... Or maybe it's just, maybe they don't have the right cards. Maybe it's stuff that protects creatures here. Maybe that's the real issue. Like, you know, stuff that gives your creatures indestructible or phases them out. You know, that type of stuff. We try to play this. They bounce a thing. They would take one, two, three, four... Five, eh, still not nearly enough. All right. Just those for now. Oh, looks like we found another Fading Hope. Well, I, I was going to say, I dare you to bounce that one. Like, I would love to shoot you for three more. Didn't think that was going to happen. All right, they put whatever it was on the bottom. All right, in the turn. We do have creature lands we can attack with as well, so kind of like queuing that up. All right, we're going to go ahead and go with this. Knowing it likely doesn't work, but, you know. Unless they're just holding make disappears. You know, we have plenty of mana open. Maybe that's the problem. Or fading hope it back to your hand. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, it looked like they might have just had a Fading Hope or something there. It was the only thing I was guessing. But the next turn, I think even if we, even if this lived, I think there was a point where we're going to try to play this and then maybe get in with this, put a counter on a flyer. If they have blockers, they got to kill us the next turn, one way or the other. You know, I think was going to be our plan. But yeah, you got to win against Mono Blue. That's just a matter of play your creatures early and often. You'll have a pretty good shot in that fight. All right, so we got to do some big things with this, which I actually liked, so that was all fine and good. I think the issue, though, overall, is now, while we did win a really fun game because of Emma Dane's Recruiter, I do feel on some level that if 
these were something else that we could have played sooner, we might just be just as well off in a lot of those cases. So I think I'm willing to turn the Imidane's Recruiter into another Lunark Veteran and another Wandering Emperor. I think that gives us another removal card. It gives us a little bit of life gain, a little more life gain, gives us more early creatures we can play, especially since we have like the tap land situation. There's going to be a fair amount of times on turn two, you're just going to have one mana open. So you go ahead and play that. So like, I kind of like what that's bringing to the table and leaving us a few more options. So this overall, I think can work like this, but here's what we're going to post. Four Lunark Veteran, two Destroy Evil, four Heart Flame Duelist, three Invasion of Gobakan, three Reckless Impulse, four Questing Druid, four Pia Nalar, Console of Revival, four Wedding Announcement, three Wandering Emperor, two Jetmir, four Virtue of Loyalty, and a whole variety of lands to make this uh, crazy pile work. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, is Destroy Evil's okay. It actually is pretty good against the enchantment deck as a whole. Obviously, getting rid of destroy enchantments is fantastic. Uh, but it actually is okay against the domain decks as well, being able to get rid of like a ley line or something like that, or even their beanstalk if you don't want them drawing extra cards. So, this isn't a terrible card to have in the list. It's just there are going to be some times against like mono red that it doesn't do much. I mean, you can pick off sometimes maybe a, a Godric if it's big enough, or something that they've put the rage counter on or on something. But generally speaking, it's going to be a pretty weak card in that fight. But a lot of your other stuff is actually pretty good. So, eh, you got to take the good with the bad there. So yeah, this was a lot of fun. Let us do everything we wanted to do. And this is like a quirky type of deck to play toward the end of the season. Like, we've learned some things from different cards. All these different things sort of come together. We get to play some of our favorite cards. Like, nothing wrong with that, right? That's where you want to be. This is actually one that I felt pretty good. You could survive sweepers, even going wide with tokens, which is pretty sweet. You have some lands you can attack with. You have a couple of planeswalkers. So I like where this is, and you don't have any particularly just terribly bad matchups. You can play around things, especially because of the haste tokens you can make from Pia, which is actually pretty cool. So I like what this is bringing to the table. You just have to play very carefully, and you know, as you saw in the video, I made some mistakes not remembering which cards were instants and sorceries or which uh, adventures. So pay attention to that for sure, because that'll affect your outcomes. And now for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Monster Manual. This is a really cool card from Baldur's Gate, I believe. And it's not really bulk, even though you probably have not seen this card before. But the card actually goes for about $4-ish. The cool part about this is, though, it's just a cool way to put cards from your hand into play cheaply. Especially if you're playing something that's full of just big monstrous creatures. You can also fill your graveyard up with it. I get why this card is actually popular. It's just all around useful. Nothing crazy, just very useful. So this is one that maybe you're looking for a few ways to trick some creatures into play, maybe to fill your graveyard. This could be the type of card you're looking for, and at least now you know it exists. And if you want to have a little more fun with adventures, I have a Jun list that was able to take advantage of Ashiok, and that was actually pretty sweet. So that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.